The NBA players have officially boycotted their games for two days now over the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Play is now set to resume as soon as today, but reports are that tomorrow is more likely. Professor, author, and human rights activist Michael Eric Dyson joining us this morning. Michael, so good to have you. We appreciate your time. And I want to Thank ask you. you, what did the NBA players accomplish with these boycotts? I mean, so much. First of all, it's great to be here always with you, Jenny and Skip and, and Shannon. Um, the reality is they, they accumulated visible capital, the capital of attention. We live in a political economy of attention. So much is grabbing for our attention. We're on the social media, we're on television. We are constantly 24 hours watching your show on repeat. But the reality is, is that they broke through uh, this iron cage, uh, airtight air cage of media to deliver a message. We are not going with business as usual. This is so significant that we must interrupt business as usual. We must make a point that something is more important than multi-billionaires who are on the NBA as the team owners. But something more important than the playoffs, which are incredibly dramatic with Luca emerging as a star and LeBron playing out of his mind for a man 35 and above. What's more important? is the fact that black people are dying in the streets. What's more important is that we must leverage our political capital, our political attention to a serious matter and interrupt business as usual and say that this is of paramount importance. Doc Rivers crying on television, Troy Vincent on radio and television doing the same thing. Two men of esteem, August, solid, solemn gentlemen who are not easily given over to every whim and caprice, every emotional wind to blow. These men have been unmoored, have been uprooted from their usual stance of holding a face of stoicism in the, in the face of American tragedy and carnage and have now said enough is enough. So the NBA players and the Major League Baseball players and the National Football League players and belatedly uh, the National Hockey League players have done something extraordinary. They have come together, they have forged a compact. Yes, it is ad hoc, yes, it is spontaneous, but it has had a tremendous effect in terms of seizing the authority away from those who would be negative and divisive and saying, we have something to say, we will not shut up and dribble or toss a pigskin or hit a baseball or hit a black puck, but we will do something more important. We will show our humanity and we will show that we are no different than any other person out here, especially a black person, a man or woman, the WNBA especially doing an incredible job of dramatizing this plight and predicament. So I'm so proud of how they have handled themselves and that's what they've achieved. Doc, um, if you don't mind me asking, what should the athletes, and since we're talking about all, all platforms, what should the mm -hmm. NBA players, what should the MLB players, what should the NFL players, WNBA players, what should they demand of their owners that they do now moving forward? That's a great question. And I think that when we've heard that they are asking the owners of the NBA teams, don't just rest on your laurels. You're getting love just for not being the owners of the NFL. Ain't much, that's a low bar. <laughs> oh, you mean we're not, we're not conservative to a degree that we are indifferent to the plight and predicament of black people or like major uh, league soccer uh, with one of the you know, major figures there saying some horrendous things. The reality is, is that they've got a low bar, but you gotta do more than that. You can't just be nice. You got to be effective. You can't just be interested in the future of African American people. After all, you employ uh, a great degree of them, uh, and your product is their body. What they must demand of them is to use and leverage their authority as owners. You know, Brother Mark in Dallas, Brother Michael in Charlotte, uh, and many of the you know the tremendous owners in uh, Philadelphia. You got to, and they've done an extraordinary job of criminal justice reform. Look at what has gone on in Philadelphia. An owner of a team or you know, a partner, I think as they're not calling themselves, can say to the criminal justice system, what you're doing is wrong. You must have prosecutors who are concerned about 
uh, calling a grand jury in the cases where black people are dead or die at the hands of police. And if not, we've got to vote you out of office. Talk to some of your friends. You know, I think about that line from the Godfather when they met, uh, Godfather one, when they met around the table. And they said the Godfather must share so many of those politicians that he collects as so many trinkets. Yes. Well, you do the same thing as an owner of an NBA team. You got connection. So now all your bragging has to be brought to bear. Oh, yeah, we got po politicians. We got co political figures. We got billionaires. Then then use your effective relationships with them to demand police reform, to demand an end to a, a qualified immunity. Now, you can't wave a wand and do that but raise your voice. Can you imagine if the owners of the NBA would come out and say, these are some specific things we have to fight, stand your ground laws in 20 states that essentially arm white men overwhelmingly with guns to be able to kill black people with the castle doctrine? These young men and women have become specific and particular. Now it's up to the owners to own up to their responsibility of finding simpatico with these uh, black men and women and these Latinx men and women and these European and white brothers and sisters and find a way to speak to the issues that need to be addressed. Mm. So Dr. Dyson, as usual, I appreciate the power of your words. You, My sir. question for you is this. Did the NBA players go far enough in your estimation? Did they wield enough of their power? Should they have boycotted longer? Should they have gone to the nth degree and said, no more playoffs, we're done for this season? Did, did they go far enough to make enough statement? And yet it's, it's conflicting for me because they still have the bubble. They still have their platform. They have now walked away from it briefly and they're back on their platform and and they can speak out from that platform so which did did they go far enough in your your opinion i think they absolutely did look they're living in the real world right when we talk about real politique that the real world this is the real deal and when you leverage your authority you have to do so within the context of the structures that you have to abide by robert frost the great poet said freedom is moving easy in a harness you, you do have a harness, <laughs> yeah. but you're moving easy in the harness. Yeah. And when you think about that old story, you got a chicken and a pig having a conversation. Hey, let's both make a contribution for breakfast. Oh, okay. The chicken, what do you have to do? I have to give up an egg. What does the pig have to do? You got to give up your life. Your, your behind, <laughs> you got to die in order to make breakfast, <laughs> right? So are you a pig or are you a chicken? And so the reality is, is that the, the, the players understood the, the, the owners do have options. We can cut y'all out. We can suspend the CBA. We can make it hard on you, force majeure, right? You, 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 they can get all kind of Latin terms they could deploy to jack things up. Now, this is owners. These are owners who claim to be ostensibly committed to the same interests of those players, but they also have their bottom line. So you got to understand what the bottom line is. But the beautiful thing about the Clippers and the Lakers, we're willing to shut it down. That sent a signal that I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what you're doing. If you're going to be in league with Muhammad Ali, did Muhammad Ali not give it all up? Yep. As, as Did he not sacrifice the entire livelihood that he had in order to make a bigger statement? Now, thank God they didn't have to do this, but I think they went far enough in this sense. The players... And I know Shannon has made this point before, and so have you, Skip, and, and, and the wonderful Jenny. The players now have to forge connection with other groups who do this for a living, yeah. right? They ain't professional uh, social activists. They use their platform to leverage their authority, but they should also make visible African-American policy forum with Kimberly Crenshaw, uh, Judith Brown Dennis. Uh, with um, you know uh, her tremendous group, um, think about uh, the uh, Gwen, uh, you know Sherilyn Eiffel with the Legal Defense Fund of the NAACP. Think about the NAACP. Think about the National Urban League. Think about National Action Network, which is as we speak holding a march in Washington D.C. with the Reverend Al Sharpton. There are groups that do this. They are the LeBron Jameses of their organization. They are the Candace Parkers of their organization. If we can now bring together those athletes with those tremendous figures who do this for a living, that would be an extraordinary marriage 
that allows their message to carry forward. So yes, I think what they did, they, this, is a, this is a race. They carried the baton the first way, the first length. They got out in front. Now they're handing the baton off to others. Now they're still in the race. They're still competing in the larger games. They will do what they have to do, but they need partners. And those partners have to be those organizations and leaders at grassroots and organized um, leaders among the elite who have been doing this for quite some time. Hmm. Doc, you know, we go back and forth, and I've heard a lot of people, and I know and you, you and I have talked about this, with the people that mm -hmm. say, well, they need to stop protesting and doing because protest doesn't work. But I don't think people realize that protest does work for the simple fact that there's a lot of legislation that have been enacted that was a direct reflection of because of the protest. And the Justice Department said the greatest singular legislation ever enacted was the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which was led, which was brought up by a protest on the march from Selma to Montgomery for voting rights because they were being disenfranchised. You're dropping more signs than I sign on here, brother. <laughs> There's no question. And, and look, somebody tell Bruce Arians, love you. Glad you got my man Tom Brady to go. So don't be messing with my man to go down there. Just get him right now. Get him some receivers. You got them, right? Don't do the Aaron Rodgers where you just jack him up, hire Jordan Love, ain't got no weapons. All right, so let me just get my bid in for my man Tom Brady. But Bruce, where you at, Bruce? 